Hey folks, welcome back to On The Bench. Well, it's getting a little bit warm here in BC. It seems like we might get an early uh, ice off this spring. So getting the Corona mid boxes ready is always essential for us BC uh, interior fly fishing anglers. Uh, and the coronamid is the most uh, the most important in the spring that the fish fe are feeding on usually. So today I'm tying you up what was my best coronamid last year. It's just basically a gray with brown, brown rib, brown collar. Make sure you have these materials handy before you tie the fly. Fruit, I'm using a partridge of redditch. This is the new curved long. This is a size 16. These are two times long, two times strong. They look like really good coronamid hooks. Nice gape on them. And yeah, very strong. Really like looks these hooks. I haven't fished them yet. I've been tying lots of flies on them so far. For a bead, I'm using a 564th brass bead in brown. For thread, I'm gonna use Semperfly Classic Waxed. I've got in gray and rusty brown. And both of these are 12-0 for the size of fly that I'm tying. And for the ribbing material, I'm using UTC. Um, it's just copper brown wire and small. Extra small might be better for this size hook. I didn't have any extra small, so I just used small. And then to coat my fly, I'm going to be using brushable crazy glue along, followed by Raid Zap, super thin. So to begin, I've slid my bead on the hook with the wide end facing forward, so I'm able to slide it over my gill easier. I'm going to start my gray thread right at the very front to tie in my gill. You can use whatever material you have handy for a gill. You've got Uni or Antron, dubbing. Um, I'm traveling right now, so I don't have a lot of materials handy that I normally have with me. Um, sometimes I use micro glint in the gill of this fly. Today I'm using this Palmer chenille because this is what I have on me. And I have been using it in a few of my chronomids and I like how it looks. It's also got a protective coating on it, so it shouldn't turn green in the algae lakes. So I'm just going to take it. I've got the string end still attached here and I'm just going to tie this right in the front. And then pull it forward just slightly. And I'm just going to bring my thread right in front here and do a few wraps just so it doesn't occlude the eye of the hook too much. And then finish your thread. Oop. Trapping anything down there. Here and there, or something. There we go. Now you can bring your bead forward and then trim your gill. I like to trim mine about uh, even with the hook okay, eye, like so. It's just little. Now you can restart your thread on the hook. Wind that in nice and tight. And then I'm just going to start my taper here. Now you can take your ribbing material. So I'm using the small uh, copper brown wire by Uni. Usually I use extra small um, a lot of the time. Sometimes I do use the small, especially with like a size 14 or 12. But I don't have small with me. And I do occasionally use this bigger rib on a smaller fly just so it's more prominent. So that's what I'm going to do with this one today, but feel free to use extra small if that's what you prefer. Now I'm going to give my bobbin a spin counterclockwise, and that's just to flatten my thread out just so it covers more of the hook and the wire. The only thing about doing it with the larger wire, you can see it sort of shows through there. So you want to make sure you cover it up as good as you can. I mean, in the end, it really doesn't make a difference, but aesthetically, I guess it does. And now I'm just going to bring my thread right down. I like to bring it down until it's, it's at like a 45 degree angle from the hook point to the bend. And then I'm just going to do two wraps in underneath that wire, like so. And then tuck that out of my way for now. And I'm going to give my bobbin another counterclockwise spin, make sure that thread's nice and flat. And I got it where I want it. And now I'm just going to start building right over top of my body without leaving too many gaps. Spin again. Like so. And then I'm 
I'm just going to bring it back about two bead widths um, for my taper. Give it another little spin there. Like so. Now I'm going to finish my gray thread. Pull that really tight snip. Now you can take your collar color. I'm using the rusty brown. I do pretty much this exact same fly in uh, steel, with a black collar and black bead, which is my helter smelter fly, and that fly's been outstanding as well. Um, I would say I probably caught more fish on this one last year, though. Maybe just because I fished it more, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm sure there is lots of patterns that look almost exactly like this because it's a very good representative of what our coronamids look like a lot of the times in BC. So I'm just going to start my rib. Nice even spaces. You ideally want about seven to eight. Like so. Bring my thread back up. And then I'm just going to go over top of it, in front of it, in behind it, in front of it. So I like to tie my wires off. And now I'm just going to bring my bobbin right up to the hook and then give my wire a little gentle twist. I don't want it to pull out. It should be tied in there good anyway. This thicker wire sometimes can be a bit of a... There we go challenge and now I'm just going to whip finish. Put that nice collar color in there. And I think I'm just going to give it one more. Like so. Go ahead and snip your thread. Now I, li I like to coat my coronamids with uh, brushable crazy glue and raids up on top of them. So I'm just going to do the crazy glue. The reason I do it this way is not only because it makes them just totally bomb proof, but it doesn't discolor your thread. So if you don't want your thread to go any darker, crazy glue is a good option. It's also getting very hard to find, this brushful stuff. I had to order it online and it was very expensive. You used to be able to get in Michaels. I can't seem to find it there anymore. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from. Um, make sure you hit like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our latest videos. We've got a new season coming out pretty soon here. Dawn's been editing it and lots of new videos coming out on YouTube. So make sure you don't uh, miss any and it also helps our channel a lot. So really appreciate it. Now I'm going to take my uh, Raids app, super thin. And I just like to put a little bit on it. and then I just brush it on. Gives it a really nice finish. Just gotta find my light. Oh, it's right here. I'm using the Raids app light as well. Uh, with the UV, it's important to have the right light strength for whatever UV resin you're using. It doesn't always have to be the same brand, but you should always check out what light strength your light is. Sometimes that can keep it from curing right, as I learned the hard way. Oh, and now I'm just going to give it one more little coat of Raid Zap. And then it's not, uh, not going to fall apart, that's for sure. Anytime soon. I'm pretty excited about spring coming. Looks like it's going to be an early one. I think Dawn and I will be filming in March, it sounds like. Uh, one of our first lake shows of the season. Can't wait. And that's it, my gray and brown coronamid. Make sure you give this one a try. It's a real winner. Like I said, I caught little, uh, probably the majority of my fish on this fly and my uh, black and black and gray uh, steel colored helter smelter last year. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care everyone, conserve the waters and tight lines.